Hello, this is Christian. In this video, we're going to create some databases for our program. This is the one that we've been working so far. This is the data set that we're going to add to our database. Right now, it's just coming from the RAM data, so I want to create it using MySQL and maybe SQLite. Okay, so uh, traditionally, when you create databases um, for your, pro your program, you will go what's called the data first approach. That means that you're going to go here. Um, I'm going to use my SQL here, for example, and launch my database system. And then I will create my database here, all the structure of the tables first. And then I go to my program and do the connection and so forth, right? So that approach is still being used, of course. Uh, that's fine. But Laravel gives you the other way around. You can do what's called the code first approach. And this is also very common in most, you know, um, full flesh frameworks like. Um, Django and also like in the .NET or ASP .NET and VC does that as well using the entity framework. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is just basically create a database first. And there are ways as well we can create a database programmatically in Laravel, but for this one here, we're going to do it just uh, uh, this way. So the database name is going to call Laravel and just create that. That's all we need to. Um, get started. The tables will be created and all this data also be created automatically or programmatically. Okay, so now back in the uh, program here. Now you can see that inside the database folder here, there is a folder called migrations. Inside the migrations folder are four files uh, provided by default when you create your project. Now these are the dates that these migration files were created. You can see so back in 2014, and 2019 and so forth. Now, each of these files, as you can see, has a really uh, a structure naming convention. The year is the day that the file was created. And then the, uh, the file name is, of course, um, underscore create users table, create password resets table, and so forth, right? If you open that first one here, um, you will see that there's a class uh, that extends a migration class. And then in here is uh, uh, two functions. One is called up. One is down, okay? The down, as you can see, it just means that it's gonna drop this database uh, table if it exists. So it recreates everything new again, that's what we do. The up here, it just means you're gonna create your table. And the table is called users, which is why the naming convention is also followed the same way, create a users table. And then the table here is referred to the table object that allows you to create these data fields programmatically and this will be converted to like SQL command and they'll be converted to actually creating the actual table. Okay. So here you can see that there's about um, two, four, six, seven files. Maybe it's going to add a few more. It depends wherever these are being called. So I'm expecting when I'm going to run the migration to run all of these uh, files, one table for users, one table for password resets, one for jobs, failed jobs, and one for personal access tokens, okay? So let's go ahead and um, check the environment first. The .env here, it tells you that by default, it's this is the default database connection. Okay, this is the type I wanna use, MySQL. The host is correct, the port number default. The database is called Laravel, which I named that Laravel as well. If you wanna change it to something else, make sure it matches this database name. The user is root and password is none. This is just a local setup. So if you are using, you know, actual username and passwords, make sure they actually match here. The credential must be matched, otherwise it will fail. Okay, so that's all I need here for this one here. Now let's go to the command terminal here. And we are going to um, run these migrations here. So I'm gonna leave this running up when a new terminal here, go to my project. And then here is where I'm gonna type all those commands. Okay, if you want to run each of these individual files manually yourself, that's fine. You just have to type the whole name here. But I'm going to run everything in the migration to see, to show you what's going on over here, okay? So do that by issuing the artisan command called migrate. And that's it. Migrate here will run everything in the migrations folder. In this case, four files. Let's hit enter. And if all goes well, you can see that it's migrating and it has been migrated. So you can also check the status of this by typing the same command here and then just put colon status. It will tell you if there's any failure or if there's any file has not been run, it will tell you right here. As you can see, all these four files have been migrated, been uh, processed. And then now if you go to the database file or page, 
Now, if you refresh the page, you're going to see that Laravel is now populated with five tables. Okay, the one that we saw earlier. This one we didn't see, but it's been created automatically also by the migration class. So this will always be here. But the users table you can see here has been created. The structure, as you can see, has been created for you as well with the ID as the primary key. And this is a foreign key and then and so forth, right? Perfect. Even all the data types here, whether these are um, has any default values, whether they are no or non nullable, all set up here again from, from the code. Same thing for these guys over here as well. Okay. Now we don't see all the actual data, but you will do that in the next phase where we'll be seeding this data, this table with actual data. Okay. So pretty cool, huh? And then the advantage of this is that, of course, you can, you know, export the uh, statements and send that to other users, or if they have your code, they just run that automatically in the command terminal and the other developers also have a copy of your database as well. Perfect. Okay, so now let's undo this. There is a function called uh, reset, a few of them, migrate and then reset. This will undo what we just did, roll everything back, delete all the tables and then and so forth. Okay, so if you do that, if you go back, you can see that all the tables should have been removed except migrations, right? You need that one there just to track your migration process in here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a table for our projects. And we're gonna fill this data programmatically to the table in the MySQL database here, all right? Okay, now we're gonna do everything here just in the command terminal until we do the actual coding. But let's go here. And so to do that, we're going to create a migration file that will look kind of similar to this here. So PHP artisan migrate. Uh, no, I say make migration. Okay. And then the name of that migration file. Of course, you're not going to put, you're not going to put the date here. The date will be stamped automatically by Laravel. So I'm going to call it, um, if you just call something like for example, if you put users like that, okay, or, or users like this, you hit enter. Now you're gonna get a migration file, file called users, you can see here, but inside here, you can see that it has, you know, just a skeleton for us, right? Just the up and down, nothing is filled in here yet, which is okay if you want to do this way, then you, you will have to go in and do the schema, or you can copy, you know, copy this and put it in there and then, you know, make the changes if you want. Or you can let, again, let Artisan do a job for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this again. Don't want that. And I'm just going to go up arrow, make a shortcut. And I'm going to call here the same function with the same name. If you if you follow this convention, it says create, that means go ahead and create a schema uh, using a table name projects. Okay, and then followed by table. Okay, so whatever is between the create and table will be the name of your table. If you have multiple names, Maybe you know project, um, you know ABC, and then table. Then you're gonna see a table name projects ABC. Okay, but ours is just called projects, so we call it projects. And then you hit enter. You're gonna get something very similar to what we saw here. If you open the file up, you're gonna see that it's pre-populated for you with some you know, two default data set here. Of course, it's not what you want, but at least it has this thing already set up we can easily go back and then just make some changes. All right, so now let's close this for now and let's fill this up. And so I'm going to open my, open this for now, open the um, inside our app. If you remember inside the data, not, uh, not, not app, I'm sorry. Inside the routes, the data files, the data file here, right? So we have four fields. ID, name, description, and URL. Now this ID, as you can see, um, you can set it so that it's auto increment. For my IDs, I'm gonna make it so that it's not auto increment. I'm going to randomize this data myself, okay? So uh, name, description, and URL. So over here, I'm gonna change this to say, uh, if you just leave the ID like this, that means it's gonna be an auto increment and primary key. I want this to be a string. So to do that, you put here the string, Oh, no, I should not string an integer. And then the name of that field is called ID. OK, 
okay? If you want this to be unique, then you can call the unique function like this, and now it's unique, okay? So that's that one there. I don't need a timestamp, so I'm gonna change this to, uh, say, a string that contains the field called name, the project name, okay? And if you don't um, just leave it as is, then that's pretty standard. And then the next one here is gonna be um, table uh, string as well. It's called the description. And then with one more, I was gonna duplicate this. Oh. that and then this is a url and that is the structure for my table if you if i run this it's going to create that for me all right so let's save this and uh, go to the terminal and now we're going to migrate run a migration of course i don't want to run a migration like i did earlier if you just do that it's going to run everything again i don't want that i want only that file so you can either you know type the whole file yourself which is a lot of typing to do or the easier way out is move this into a directory so let's say that i want to move this into a directory called uh, projects okay so move this file into that projects directory now it's in there okay so when and when i do the migration down here in the terminal i can do something like this i can say migrate only the um, file inside its path inside the database folder migrations migrations folder then the projects folder okay everything in that project is on one file so that's that's how you can avoid the other ones so hit enter hopefully it will run and here we go everything looks good now let's go to the uh php admin over here refresh and there is our projects folder. I mean, table. Click on the structure, and here they are. Okay. Um, so actually, it automatically set as a primary key, which is okay. But it is not awkward auto increment. It's going to let me do some randomization here. So far, so good. Right. So the next thing is we're going to go ahead and see this table with the data from our site. Of course, I'm not going to do that uh, from the site. We'll do the, everything again in the terminal. So now, how do we do this? Inside here, the database folder, there is a seeders folder. And again, here, there's a function or class called database seeder. Inside this database seeder has a run function. And again, this is a default setup only. You can put your functions or your code in here to actually see your data. Okay, so if you uh, run a command uh, seed, make seed or something, then it will run all the data in here and seed your table. Okay, but instead of doing this one here, I'm going to create something similar and um, for my project only. So I'm going to run a command called um, php artisan uh, make and then seed. Uh, I think that's what it is. Yeah, make seed. And then, um, no, that's not right. I don't remember where it is. Let's see make seed or is it cedar let's let's look at the command terminal so, <clears throat> so let's see i don't remember um, i think it's it's seed is it either make seed or db seed or something so make seer or create a create class okay create a cedar class maybe that's the one and then there's a db seed is to see the database okay so you want to make the make the class so it's the cedar class okay perfect okay all right so here again let's go and then clear our console and we're going to make a seed so php artisan and then make cedar and then the file name is going to be called um, project cedar okay let's hit enter and hopefully it will create that for us as you can see here as a class project file called project cedar and it will look similar just like the other one. Now we go ahead and put that inside here. What does it do? Well, this is where we create our database, right? How do you populate database in your uh, program it is through that Cedar class. So um, I'm gonna do the following. I'm gonna go over here and copy this data set, uh, actually the whole thing here, the for loop as well, and put it inside the Cedar class right here. Um, okay, let me do that first. 
Um, and I'll, I'll move I'll move this constant out of it because I cannot put constant inside the function. I move outside. Let's this is return over here in the class space. Okay, so my constant is up here available in the global space, and then inside the function run is going to be where I put the um, I create my database table. Okay, so in here, let me collapse this, give some space. I'm not going to need this for now. What happens in here? Okay. So in here, we do something kind of similar to um, just, you know, adding to the database. So what we do to do is we need to run a command called DB for the DB class called table. This function here will actually do the insertion for us. The name of the table is called projects. Okay. And we're going to run the insert command. So insert this command is an array of our data sets. Okay. The DB, if it's not um, available, make sure that you do the import. So control space bar, it's going to be coming from, um, uh, where's it coming from? The, the facade, just hit the first one here. It says eliminate support facade DB, that's the one. So click that and just make sure it says DB and it should be imported at the very top. Okay, so you need that to be, uh, to be used. All right, so now, we need to insert into this table projects. And what do we need to insert? Well, I need the ID field. So this will be the ID field that will map to the, um, I don't want a DB ID here, but it's data. I call it project data, right? That's this project data here. And then get the ID put in there, which is okay in this case, right? So I'm gonna assign it with the data of ID. And then comma, the next field is the name. And this could be coming from the data name. Okay, next is description. Data description, I'll just co copy both of these right here. Okay, URL, and then bam. All right, so those are the fields that will be added to the table projects when we run the seeder. Okay, so let's say this, and I'm gonna remove this one so it's not too messy. And say that, now go back to the terminal and run that seeder command. PHP artisan, uh, instead of make, it's called db.c, okay? And if you wanna see the just, just the file name, then you would then give it um, the path I think the path, the name, or well, the name of the file um, called project seed. Okay. If you don't include this, you should run the seed. As you can see, nothing's going to happen. Okay. If I do that, right, it's going to run the database seed, which is this file here. Nothing in here. That's what happens. Okay. I want to run the project seeder. So to do that, you will have to choose the class. So the dash class. And then the name of the class is called Project Cedar. Hit enter. If all goes well, as you can see, very quickly, very fast. If I go back to the uh, Marion over here, refresh the page, and you should see that now my projects have been populated with the data from the file. Pretty cool, huh? So there we go. That's how you do it. And if you want to keep adding more data to this, you can do so in the command terminal, you know, just update this, we add more data to this file uh, and, and so forth here. So that is pretty much how you do it using MySQL. Very easy. Now, the neat thing about this, as you can see, is that it's quite powerful because what if I want to change to a different database, right? For example, I want to use uh, SQLite. All you have to do, because this is the same stuff here, similar to the PDO, right? Um, you just have to change the database type. So in here environment, instead of saying MySQL, what if I want to use SQLite? And SQLite is very, very fast, pretty easy to do. I could do that by, you know, um, I just need this, this one here. I need the database name. And I want to turn all these off. So, okay, come all these out. Um, this, I think, is the pound sign is dead. Okay, so I'm gonna look for an SQL light and the database name will be the same. 
So the connection, all I do is just, just that, and the rest will just work just fine. All I need to do then is go to the root class here, the root folder, and create a file called laravel.sqlite. It is just a text file, as you can see. But once you've done run the migration, it's going to convert this to a, a SQLite 3 database. And actually, um, the environment, I should, I should call it laravel.sqlite. Okay, it has to match the name. Okay. So you don't need port number and things like that because it will map directly to this, this simple file. Now in here, I'll do exactly the same as before. Let me clear this control here. Now, um, if you do have SQLite installed, make sure you do so you can access it. But to run a migration, uh, you can go and just go back to the previous command here, um, right here, migrate, right? The same file inside a projects folder, run that command. And as you can see, the SQLite has now been updated. It's, a, it's now a binary file. You can't read it anymore. And it's an SQLite format version three, okay? And then now I'm gonna seed this table, this as table, I mean, uh, yeah, the table projects. I mean, just to make sure it's, it's working, I can open another terminal over here to show you. I do have SQLite, so if you type SQLite 3, it's gonna take you right into the terminal here. If you don't have it, just go install SQLite first, okay? And then if you type in dot um, databases, usually it will tell you your database. If it's not there um, for whatever reason, but it, it should be there. I'm gonna open it though. Uh, I'm gonna clear this, so type in shell, dot shell, and then CLS to clear it. Dot open, and the file is called Laravel dot sqlite you gotta type it correctly though if you type it wrong then it's gonna create a new database for you that's all it's not gonna crash or anything so i open that file for use now if i type in dot tables enter you can see that i have a table called projects and one called migrations which is very similar to what you saw earlier over here and the mysqlite migrations and projects okay now you want to see what's inside and then you can do the um, you know, select all from the projects folder. And you, you have to terminate with the semicolon. And there's nothing there because you haven't added data yet. So now let's go back and let's see this table. So again, go back to the command where we did the uh, DB seed. This is the command right here, okay? And hit enter. Now the data has been seeded. Now I'll switch over to the SQLite and run the command again. And there it is. All the data has been added to our database SQLite and ready to use and, uh, and, and good to go. Okay, you can insert data here too. For example, insert into your projects folder. Other values will be, um, you know, 555. And then the type will be um, app uh, one. The description is like my first app. And then the URL is HTTP uh, app one dot app one. Insert that, run the command select again, and there it is, been added to our database. So here we go. And that's that, quit, quit that. And that's how you migrate data to a database, folks. You can use very easily. I can switch between the two here without changing anything in my code. And that is the beauty of uh, these type of frameworks. So any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.